So we're here today with a number of the creative team from uh, the Portrait Project. And I thought instead of trying to type everything out uh, and put it in the syllabus, I would just create a little video uh, with the various team members and they can talk a little bit today about who they are and their role within the project. So the Portrait Project is, um, is, is an interesting response to um, co the COVID-19 situation and the fact that everything that sort of makes theater theater is kind of illegal right now. Um, we, you know, we can't, we can't all get together in a room as, as an audience. It's bad to speak moistly. Um, and so, you know, many actors can't, can't work right now because they do speak moistly. Um, and uh, how do we rehearse? And, and you know, various um, companies have, have begun to uh, create um, pathways into sort of a, a, a new world. But this response that, that, the, that the theater department has, ha has had, I think is a very creative one. It's neither theater nor film, it, but it's a mediated creative response in the middle. And so that seems, that sounds not very easy to understand, but I think I'm gonna pass it over to Catherine Brandt, um, who's the department head and also the, the uh, creator, the instigator of this project and to talk about it a little, in a bit more detail. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, uh, so I guess I'm, I can talk about this project uh, from kind of two directions. One of them is just the sort of creative idea behind it and it was really inspired by the Getty Museum did a series of challenges to the general public in the middle of the pandemic, um, asking them to, from home, create their own um, uh, recreations of famous portraits that I guess, hang in the Getty. So um, a lot of people, public from the public did this and it went out on social media and there's, there's actually quite a great website which has a host of these different portraits that people have um, recreated at home and they were very creative with it. So they incorporated things that were really uh, at the height of pandemic um, uh, prominent, like they created, you know, wigs out of toilet paper rolls and held bags of flour for babies and things like that. So I was really um, intrigued by this project and thought it might be a really interesting project to present to our students. And um, from there, thought pedagogically. So if you think about what you want the students to learn, you want to create something online that they can actually learn something in theater and film. So it's a bit of a hybrid. Um, so not only are they going to be inspired by and respond to these portraits, they're going to write 90 second monologues um, from either the point of view of the subject of the portrait or from the artist, uh, or I don't know, but they're gonna respond to the portraits that they recreate with the 90 second monologue. And, um, we have then invited uh, a filmic element into that, which is where Thomas Gallagher, who is going to be um, coaching students through what they can do with the camera from home, because they're going to do it all on their cell phones. And as a, as a recent graduate of the film program here and somebody who's done a lot of theater, he has a foot in each world and can help students look at how to um, put those projects together. So they're not just one face looking at the camera. It might be in a long shot, a mid shot, close up, close up of a hand, something that uh, might help to visually tell the story rather than just relying on the text to tell the story. And then from there, um, another colleague who's not here today, Gerald Saul, who's the department head of film, he wanted to jump on board the project and have his 13 students, because there's 13 acting students in the, in the project, he wanted his students who are working on how to do experimental film to respond to the projects um, with a very short, I think he's doing an even shorter, maybe a 60 second experimental film. Mm. So once the projects are chosen by the acting students, the film students will select one of those 13 portraits and they will work independent of each other so that when the project gets knit together and edited together by the filmmaker, Thomas Gallagher, he'll be able to kind of weave these different responses to the artwork together in one big project. So, um, so that's kind of the impetus and the 
the goal of what we hope to do with this project, which does exist somewhere between film and theater and has a foot in each world, or we could just call it a hybrid, you know, uh, I don't know what you'd say, theater film piece, film theater piece. Yeah, so that's yes. it in a nutshell. No, it's, I mean, really exciting and in some ways, um, you know, I think it takes us to, into that world where, you know, um, some of those broad, high, like, it's different than streaming a theater piece, right? It's, 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 again, it's, it's, I think it takes us almost in that world of the, high, of the HD broadcasting net, which is, becomes another art form in itself because it's not, it's not the opera itself and it's not, again, it's not film. It's this interesting world in between, this mediated world in between now. For sure. And yeah, because I, I forgot to mention that we also have another um, another filmmaker who's coming in to talk about the notion of storyboarding. So when they've written their 90 second piece, she's uh, Christy Nels is going to come in and talk about um, how to storyboard that monologue so they know what shots will help tell their monologue, their narrative monologue really, really well. So, uh, you know, they're using, they're learning how with Kelly Jo Burke, who is coming in to work with them. She's a playwright and uh, she's written a lot of solo pieces. So she's gonna come in and work with them in how to develop the monologue. And then hopefully my goal is when Christine comes in and teaches them about storyboarding and they can give that storyboard then to Thomas Gallagher who can help them even maybe edit, to, edit the text down further because they'll have uh, um, an understanding of, of what, the, what the visual language of that piece is a little bit more. That's the goal, yeah. <laughs> Great. No, thanks. Uh, and I mean, yeah. you know, that was about, I mean, it, it is a multi-layered complex project. Um, so I think that it's, um, and I think the more we talk about it, the more complex we realize how, how complicated and complex it really is and how many moving pieces there are. Thomas, um, is there anything, you know, I'm sure you've got something you'd like to add. Uh, well, I think Catherine covered fairly well, like what my role is going to be. Um, there's there's a lot of interesting things about this. I think one of the really um, challenging but exciting things for the theater students will be having to sort of, it, to some degree, become familiar with the language of film uh, to be able to use it because uh, they will have to be filming their own stuff because we can't go there to film it for them. Um, but uh, also um, just kind of being forced into that situation and it's exciting in the sense of uh, getting to mix those two things because that's something I've been interested in in a long time and it's a, a language that you can actually learn fairly quickly and that if you don't get too caught up in trying to use it perfectly that you can be very expressive with. So I'm really excited to see how we can uh, pursue that with them and help them and then come up with something and what we come up with. So. And you did a lot of work with um, Catherine and Bill and my uh, with um, the Born City, and you know, and that, yes. and that became an interesting. Catherine and I did a paper on this in um, earlier this year when you could still fly and stuff. Um, but about how you know there was aspects of that production that end up being seen. They were seen through the through the, through the camera lens, not through the uh, not through the sort of the audience theater eye. And it was really interesting. It was just sort of interesting how, you know, again, how skillfully you've been able to weave those images and then working with Catherine. And so, so sometimes your projected images would be what we wanted to look at. And sometimes it, they weren't. And sometimes it was what was on the, the stage. So, I mean, I think one of the things that excites me is that we've, you know, we've, we've, we've done this as a team before, not to this, not in this way, but we've done it as a team before. So it's kind of pushing, probably pushing envelopes and, and pushing the edge a little bit further. Um, than if we were all sort of trying to start this from scratch from the very beginning, right? There's something about that. Yeah, and I think uh, also like one of the things that is interesting to explore in this and that I don't know where it's going is uh, where does this fit in that kind of foot in both worlds, you know? Like what does that mean exactly? How, like it is, it is going to be theater, but it is going to be film also. And like, what will that be? I don't know exactly. <laughs> We'll figure it out. So. And I think we've all sat through enough sort of streamed live performance this spring summer. We don't need to see any more of stream live performance. That's just that, right? I mean, because I think there's going to be nothing that kills live performance quicker than than too much streaming of it, with no uh, no thinking about aesthetics and no 
you know, thinking about uh, that audience relationship, right? I mean, I think one of the goals of this is that we draw the audience in in a way that we can't necessarily with a live, with simply live performance or simply live film, it'll be something different. We hope, I think. Um, so now I'm going to jump down the screen and May Mason, do you want to, um, do you want to talk a bit about? Sure. This is right in my world of the unknown and, uh, making something out of nothing. Uh, so yeah, my role will be to completely support, uh, coming up with ideas, thinking outside of the box, um, using found objects, things. What I want to do is help students, um, come up with their own ideas and then, make it into a reality which is uh, doable. And so, yeah, that's kind of my area. And so I look forward to that for sure. And we should say for those who don't know you that you're also, you're the scenic carpenter for the theater department. And so you're used to working with bigger scale than-, <laughs> than the, I make everything out of a pool noodle. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Mason. Yeah, and Kathy Mearns, do you want, uh, who's a- um, Head of wardrobe and uh, the costume, man costume shop manager, and uh, also is a magician at making things out of nothing. Um, we'd like to talk a little bit about um, your role as well. Oh, just unmute. Oh, there we go. There we, there go. we go. Okay, yeah. Um, my name's Kathy, as Wes said, and I'll be here to facilitate and help you come up with ideas. You can run anything by me, and yeah, it's. I always, uh, when you think of costumes, we never always just shop in fabric stores. We go to hardware stores, building supply places. So you bring all that into the realm of this picture, portrait, and we can come up with some great ideas between a lot of us. I think it's going to be a good, it's, I'm going to enjoy doing this because I looked at the Getty uh, website there. And when you see them with vacuum cleaners and all these things that they use and it, people came up with some really good ideas as to how to bring these portraits into a different realm outside of the traditional portrait. It was really some good ideas. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And, I mean, I think one of the things that's also interesting is that, I mean, Catherine started, was talking about this idea at the height of the pandemic, like in April, I believe it was. Um, and I think one of the things we want to, like now we can all go to the store, we can all go to Lowe's, we can all go here, we can all go there, right? I mean, for the most part, um, whether you want to or not, it's another thing, but it's, it, we're, not as, we're not as trapped as we were. But I think what we want to do is maintain that sense of um, improvisation, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be highly scripted, it's going to be highly um, thought through, um, it's, it's, it's very well organized, but we still want to maintain that, that spontaneous element, right? And, and, Again, making something out of almost nothing uh, in a magical in a magical way that only theater can do. <laughs> um, and Bill, your we should um, let Bill talk too. Who's on sabbatical though, so we know we don't want to let him talk too much. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Bill. I'm actually the I teach the tech program, except this year, yes, as Wes said, I'm on sabbatical, but um, still going to be really behind the scenes involved in the project. One of the things that I'm going to hope with working with some of the other students and is to actually try and light your uh, project a little better than what you see on a normal screen of either, um, well, Kathy right now has got some very strange coloring happening on her face. And so it's like, do we want that? Do we not want that? So I'll be working with students and also too is if we decide to add in sound, I'll be working with um, one of my students. So I'll be behind the scenes, but um, yeah, it's just also to hopefully get away from everybody right now is in a basically close up shot, except um, I'm kind of in a half body shot. So again, people are going to have to light things better a little differently when they actually go for their project and how to actually try and replicate the lighting that is in the portrait. It reminds me of an assignment I did really badly on in grad school. So excellent. There we go. Um, so <clears throat> I think it's, I, that, I think that gives us a great sort of summary. Um, it would be, I mean, we'll talk in, in future time with Kelly Jo and um, Christine, just to sort of, again, get, you know, bring, bring their expertise in and into, again, 
taking that visual world into a three-dimensional sort of spoken word and then back into some sort of a two-dimensional world. I think it's going to be a, a really sort of fun process to follow and, and, and a lot of transitions and, and steps involved and um, just keep us all, uh, all uh, in, the, in the loop sort of as, as it were. Um, so anything else anyone wants to say before we wrap up today? Catherine. I was just going to say, we seem to be the team that does everything super fast because the born settee, I think we had four weeks. And this one, the students have to have their monologues written by the end of September. They have to have them filmed by the end of October so that Thomas can edit everything together for November 19th, which is when it goes online. And we'll have a, um, a live talk back with both of the students. The film students will not have seen the theater students work and vice versa. So when those students all get together to see it online for the public, they're gonna see each other's work for the first time. And I think that's really kind of fun. So um, uh, that there, there will be a, a kind of talk back after that. So it happens really fast. And there's something about, I guess, compressed time that squeezes out work that you don't have time to second guess yourself on. You just have to dive in and do it, right? So that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> no, I, yeah, and, and I think sometimes, you know, we all work really good to deadline. So I think we've just, we've, we back ourselves into those corners, right? So um, we, we work to deadline. <laughs> okay, so if no one, else, no one else has anything else to say, then I think we'll, we'll um, Say goodbye for now, and we'll uh, we'll check back later uh, in this in this semester.